So walk us through this from your perspective. How do these vegetable oils lead to insulin resistance? Very simple. So you eat them and they are high in these kinds of fatty acids called polyunsaturated fatty acids. Those are important fatty acids to understand. Um, they're different from saturated fatty acids and monounsaturated fatty acids. How? They're chemically different. Um, they're less stable. They're so much less stable that you can see it on your counter. When you take out your butter, it doesn't melt on your counter. When you take if, uh, olive oil, that's got more unsaturated fatty acids in it. That's why it's liquid. When you put olive oil in the fridge, parts of it turn solid because olive oil has some saturated fat in it. When you put corn oil in the fridge, it stays liquid because it has very little saturated fat. And you can also feel the difference too. Um, uh, you can feel this instability. So you can see it and you can feel it. So it looks solid instead of liquid. And it, it, it's, it changes over time. The polyunsaturated fatty acids change over time when they react with oxygen. You can tell that if you've ever had a bottle of corn oil over a month or two, the edge of it, you know, where the screw cap is, gets very, very sticky, very <laughs> tacky. Um, whereas butter, you know, you can have butter that's been in your fridge for a month, although not usually if you're following the kind of diet that we recommend, right? But that butter is not going to change even if it's exposed to air, it's still going to stay the same, which is kind of slippery and slimy. Um, so because it's stable, so it's, it's got a lot more stable saturated fatty acids. In it. So this instability means that our body can't just do anything with it. We, we, we can only tolerate a very tiny amount in our body tissue. Most of our body tissue um, highly regulates the different kinds of fatty acids that we have because if the recipe were wrong, then our cells would be either too stiff or too liquidy. It would be like a Goldilocks scenario and, and um, you know, everybody's the cells would die. They'd be either too stiff, too hot, or too cold. They wouldn't be just right. So we need this certain amount of little bit of polyunsaturated fatty acids. How much? Maybe like um, uh, two to three percent, right? Just on your Joe average cell. There's different cells have different amounts. But if you get more than that, what happens? Well, you have to store it or burn it. But if you have too much to burn that moment after that last meal, you're going to store it. You're going to store it where? In your body fat. And over years, it actually builds up in our body fat like a toxin um, would build up. So a baby is born with body fat that has more of a normal human body fat profile. But over years of eating uh, these vegetable oils, the concentration of the polyunsaturated fatty acids rises and it gets to a certain threshold where you get into different kinds of metabolic problems. And this is reflected in something um, surgical. <laughs> So you can take a biopsy of your body fat and analyze it and see how many polyunsaturated fatty acids do you actually have. And they did this a hundred years ago or at the turn of the, like early in the 19 teens. And they saw that at that point in time, the, the percentage uh, was somewhere around two to 3%, maybe some up outliers were up at 5% at the most, but it was really two to 3%. As the century wore on, and the amount of vegetable oil being consumed went up, the percentage of polyunsaturated fatty acids in body fat and human body fat went up too, right along with it. So by the middle of the century, instead of being two to 3%, it was around 10%. And now we have people where it's around 20 to 25% in the last like, a uh, bit of research I could, I could get was from biopsies done in 2010. And since it reflects, since the body fat reflects the PUFA in the diet and our PUFA in the diet has gone up significantly since 2010, I would predict you will find people in the population that have 30% of their body fat now composed of these unstable polyunsaturated fatty acids. That's the difference. That's why somebody who might have 10% body fat can end up in inflammatory trouble because that when that body fat gets released, you can't burn your body fat in your fat. It has to get released and it gets released into your bloodstream. Then it goes to your muscles and they burn it. Well, 
that when that body fat is unstable and your cells try to burn it, it damages the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. 